It's a great pleasure to be over here today. Thank you. And I guess I understand from all the topics that you've been talking about tourism and you're going to talk about tourism and I'm probably the only one that is not talking, going to talk about tourism. So if you feel bored, stop me and we'll go directly for the questions. Israel is not a normal country. country. I mean, every country as a country is a product. We have to somehow to market it. We have to find the right, we have to find the right uh, way to market it, to find the image that we want to have to a country. But Israel is in a different situation. Every country is running its own life. Sometimes it's easier, sometimes it's harder. For us, Israel image is so many times dependent on the situation in the Middle East. It's dependent on, on conflict, on wars. Uh, we can try to project whatever we want to you, and then every few months, every few years, unfortunately, we have another round of violence, another war, and this is obviously affecting the image of Israel. When you are here, I guess, again, talking here about uh, tourism over here, or talking about investment, if you'll have to decide where do you want to go for vacation, or where you want to invest your money or your company to work in, you wouldn't choose a country in a conflict. I can convince you, just for the sake of saying, and not that I'm going to try to do so, that Israel is the right side in the conflict in the Middle East. It might be nice. But let's say that you're going to support us in 100% to say, yes, you're right, the other side is wrong. Still, when you'll have to choose where you're going to for, for vacation, you'll say, look, as much as I like you, I don't want to go to a place where rockets are falling on. Or when I want to establish a company or a, 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 to produce my products, I'll go to a country that I know that whenever I need to stand on time, whenever I need to supply for Christmas, for example, my merchandise, I know that it's not going to be in any risk because of factories that are not being able to work, planes that are not being able to land, ships that cannot dock in the port. And here is the big a, a challenge that we have in Israel. And the way that we're trying to do it is we're trying to, to basically minimize the role of the Middle East issue in the image of Israel. It's not easy. Sometimes it's not in our hands. Sometimes reality is forcing on us to deal with it. I guess that uh, many of you heard about the speech of yesterday of Prime Minister Netanyahu in the Congress talking about uh, Iran. And here I want to start my, uh, my presentation to you today. My whole career for me, I mean, in my whole career, Germany for me is the most exotic country wherever I've been posted in. My whole career always took me because my background to, Ch to Asia. I'm a graduate of Chinese studies, I speak Chinese, uh, I've been posted in Shanghai, uh, Bangkok, I was ambassador in Nepal, ambassador in Vietnam, consul general in Guangzhou, and imagine that a new wave of violence is starting and rockets are falling on Israel. And my job is really over there to promote the exchange with the countries where I'm being posted in. Let's take just two postings, for example, a, a, as example. One of them is Consul General in Guangzhou, located in the, most ri the richest province in China, Guangdong, where the Shenzhen is there. Shenzhen is the high-tech capital of China. And Vietnam, country that really with all due respect, couldn't care less about what's happening in the Middle East. They have their own agenda, they have their own challenges, and what they want to achieve is the development of Vietnam. Now I have two challenges. One is to promote the economic relations or the image of Israel as tourist destination in Vietnam and in China. And the other one is to convince them to support us at the United Nations. Obviously, if I'm going to project Israel as a country that right now is standing under attack, again, I'm damaging our uh, economic efforts and I'm damaging our tourism efforts. I'm damaging also, I'm seeing so many young people over here. If any of you would like to study in Israel, and this is, we want everybody to come to study in Israel. We are having special programs for it in English for people to come to study in Israel. What should I do? And the idea was really to give up on the political issues and the idea was to minimize as much as possible the issue of the Middle East and the relations and to try to expand all other views or all, the, all, the, all other faces of Israel which are so varied and so beautiful, to put the focus on Israeli literature. We're going to have next week over here in the Leipziger Book Messe, Israel is going to be the topic country over here. We're going to have so many writers from Israel com coming. Many of them are very famous around the world. 
We are going to focus, we are focusing on Israeli uh, modern dance that is very famous among professionals. We are focusing on tourism, we are focusing on academy, research and development. Everything that you want in order to make sure that Israel is not suffering from the image that usually those that get it only from the newspaper, that's what they see. And this is what we're trying to do. So I hope it's going to work. Uh, the voice sound is not working for some reason. population that's done the most to contribute to the technology revolution. Okay, now, so. when you look at the NAS, it's by many measures, the, the country relative to its population that's done the most to contribute to the technology revolution. Now, when you look at the NASDAQ, companies are listed from around the world. There's one country, though, that truly stands out, and that is Israel. If you go to the Middle East looking for oil, you don't need to stop in Israel. <laughs> but if you go looking for brains, for energy, for integrity, you know, it's the only stop you need to make in the Middle East. For over 60 years, Israel has been at war, the target of terrorist attacks, and boycotted by many of her neighbors. Yet somehow, during this same time, she has built a nation, transformed an arid wasteland into an agricultural miracle, and evolved into one of the most technologically innovative countries in the world. How did a nation of seven million manage this transformation? Mayor Brand. This is exactly what we're trying to do. We're not trying to do things that don't exist. exist. What we're trying to do is to put the limelight on issues that are very attractive in Israel and people wouldn't know, have an idea that they are there. When I was becoming a consul general in Guangzhou, I was responsible for all Southeast China, 600 thousand square kilometer, 220 million people. And my ministry was asking me, I was opening the office over there, which minister do you want to come to inaugurate the office? And I said, I don't want any minister to come. It's not going to do any good for me. I want to bring Ada Yonat. It was 2010. Ada Yonat, Professor Ada Yonat, is the first woman that received the Nobel Prize in Chemistry since Marie Curie. I said that if we want to present Israel in the way that we can benefit from it, we should focus on issues that are relevant, for example, for China, on issues that take us to real places, places that are important for us, but totally different from the places that Israel is enjoying in China. And we did go there, and we did bring her. And it was really hard to explain the wonderful uh, results that we had for my whole period in China, thanks to her visit. This is Ada Yonat, wonderful woman. When we met with her, with the party secretary of Guangdong province, he's also a member of the Chinese Politburo, he said to us as the first sentence, he told us that he told his people that the country that chose to open its offices in a foreign country with a world famous scientist show exactly where their priorities are. And this is really what led us, us and the Chinese, to put the focus on what we wanted to do. When we came over there, talking about tourism, almost no Chinese tourists wanted to go to Israel because they said it's not a safe country. Taking into account science and technology, taking into account research and development, academical one, as well as industrial one, was the key factor to change not only our image in China, Southeast China at least, but to change the trend. People were starting to go to Israel as part of delegation, commercial delegations, scientific delegations. They were coming back to China and saying, look, it's a wonderful country. We saw so many things that we didn't know that exist. More than this, 
We were asking them, what did you feel about your security? They said, it's totally different from what I read in the newspaper. So people were starting to come back, and then journalists were sent over there. At the beginning, we sent them. Came back with wonderful photos, wonderful uh, TV footages, and then we didn't have to ask for anything anymore. They already went by themselves, they paid for it, and groups were starting to go. And we were benefiting from different uh, aspects. First, the political issue was not anymore on, 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 on the table. Second, we started to see investment coming in, pouring into Israel. Talking about Shenzhen, Shenzhen is uh, has seeing the two, two of the five largest telecom companies in the world in Shenzhen. The third largest uh, internet company is located in Shenzhen. All of a sudden, they found out that when they are buying basically know-how, they are going to the US and buying Israeli know-how. All of a sudden, they realize that they don't have to go to the US anymore. They can come directly to Israel to reach us and to find with us at the very early stage of the production and do it directly. The end result of these three years that I've been there was in the first ever branch of university that the Chinese sponsor, foreign university, Chinese sponsor totally by themselves. This is a ceremony that the Israeli leading uh, technical university is signing with the government of Guangdong of establishing a university in China, 147 million US dollar investment by the Chinese government, as well as a donation by Mr. Li Kaixing, the one in the middle, one of the richest person in the world, one of the largest investor in high tech in the world. He was giving a donation of 130 million US dollar to the Israeli Technical University. It didn't change our political situation. It didn't change our military situation. Israel stayed as, as it was. The idea was that people were willing to see a different Israel. Not a limited one that you get to see when you will open today every newspaper around the world, when you will open CNN, BBC, you will see Israel only through the eyes of the conflict. Our goal, our challenge, is a huge challenge, is to try to show many different faces. We're working very hard on it. We're trying to bring as much as possible people to Israel because if I'm coming here and I'm telling you how Israel is wonderful, you can, you can believe me, you cannot believe me. But any one of you that will be visiting Israel, you did visit Israel, will see that what you get on the media and what you see in reality is totally different. And for this, we're bringing as much as possible people to Israel to let them speak on our behalf. And I want to show you this one, and this doesn't work again, the sound for some reason. contribute a big founding to local society. And no discrimination and equal treatment for all. Everyone is beautiful. Health and happiness for my friends and family. None of them should suffer from things out of their control. I wish our society develops in a sustainable manner, in harmony with nature and its resources, and without economic and social disparity. 
This is the Asian science camp that was taking place in Israel in uh, 2012. The idea was really to try to expose Israel as a hub of research and development and to encourage young students to come to study in Israel. We didn't have too many of them, foreign students in Israel before. We were creating special programs in English that uh, are uh, with degrees that can be accepted in other countries. We had about 500 of them coming to Israel in the summer of 2012. Many of them from countries that Israel do not have diplomatic relations with. 80 of them were come, returning to Israel after one or two years to continue their higher education in Israel. And as I said, the idea that we have in branding Israel, and branding Israel can be in many ways, and we're talking here about innovation, the idea that we have is to show that Israel is much more than what you get in the media. It's not in our hands. It's not totally in our hands. Most of it, it's not in our hands. But the small share that we can do by exposing people to the other sides of it, this is what we're trying to do. Again, I know that you, most of you are dealing with tourism. Tourism is a f full world. Israel is a place, I mean, if you go to Israel right now, today, you can go uh, to the Mount, of Mount Hermon and ski over there. And if you just take a drive of six hours, you can reach the uh, Red Sea and go swimming in the Red Sea. Small country that can promise so many opportunities to so, to so many different people, from Jerusalem with history of 5,000 years to Tel Aviv that is probably most of the most vibrant cities today in the world. When they're saying a city that never sleeps, they mean Tel Aviv. Science and technology, innovation, second in the world probably only to the US. Everything can be found there. We're trying to find each and every group in the world and to appeal to them. Israel today is a center for investment. There's almost no international company, leading company in the world that is not invested in Israel, in the high tech sector. Just taking enough, this computer in my hand, it said Intel inside which means that 50% of the software that exists over here, the brain of this computer, is being innovated in Israel, not produced, innovated in Israel. Taking the cellular, cellular phone, iPhone, sorry, I'm not making any, uh, you can buy whatever you want. I, I have iPhone because that's what my um, ministry bought me, but uh, I prefer uh, Samsung, I shouldn't say so. <laughs> Transmission of I iPhone, this is an Israeli technology. So many technologies that you have over here in this machine are coming from Israel. It's a full world, and somehow we are not being able to pass, though we're trying very much, the very narrow perspective of the conflict. I hope that the conflict is going to be solved soon, not because of our image, because everybody should deserve to live in peace, but I also hope that all of you and others will be able to see that Israel is much more than the conflict. And I'll be happy to answer questions because, again, I'm dealing with issues that I understand are not part of your week this week. So please.